Ah, yes, here we are once again broadcasting from possibly the worst broadcast facility money can rent. Welcome to the infamous Felony Flats and the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show. We are the BS Boys, the original mayhem behind the mic broadcast crew. Once again. Hello, Steve. We, we always seem to uh, find this place on Thursday nights right now, 730. Tonight, we're going to be speaking with Mark Collins, head coach of the newly crowned Cascade Cup champions, the Bellingham Blazers, plus making the rounds on all the other playoff runs going on in the A-Dub and the Western States Hockey League. A lot of stuff going on, man. Yeah, there is a lot of good stuff going on. It's been exciting. Um, we, ha- we had a trip down to Medford. Yeah, we did. We uh, we made a stop down there at the Medford Madhouse last Saturday night. Four and a half hour drive. It was uh, we lucked out with mostly sunny skies. It um, wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. That was a good drive. I mean, um, good weather. Made pretty good time. Stopped uh, prior to the game and got some really really expensive tea and uh, cinnamon roll. Yeah, at four bucks, right? Uh, it's crazy. I, I you know, I, and I understand why people want to go to those like specialized coffee shops. I mean, I really do. But, I mean, I don't drink a lot of coffee. I'll, I'll go to 7-Eleven and get my coffee. Yeah. But, I, I like to make my own. It's a lot yeah, cheaper. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, funny thing happened. Um, Duck Dynasty boys went to one last night. Um, they had it on the show. It was interesting to watch them in a place like that. And uh, they all had espresso. They came back to the shop. They got so much work done in a short amount of time. Uh, and all of a sudden, they started getting this uh, headache from all the caffeine that they had. It was very interesting and funny. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, You're thanks for sharing that. That's our Duck Dynasty update for the week. That's your Duck Dynasty update for the week. Uh, that's the thing with cappuccino and all that, you know, especially doubles, is you, you have a really good buzz, but then you have a really massive crash if you're not used to it. Yeah. That's a ton of caffeine it to is. have in your system. I don't do that. I don't mind it. It doesn't bother me. Can't do it. Cannot do it. Yeah, we had a good time down in Medford, uh, hanging out with Dave and Tom. Yeah, during great. The, uh, during the game? Met April, and uh, thanks to, to April and Tom and Dave for having us down there and letting us broadcast them with them the entire game. Yeah, had uh, had a good talk with uh, Karen Irving yeah. down there, and then met Troy and uh, had a good talk with John. So kind of met the whole crew as it, as it was down there at the Medford Madhouse. One thing I was going to mention, and it was brought, you know, kind of brought up, we sat there and we watched people line up before they even opened the door. Uh, it's at like 10 to 6 yeah. they're lining up. Yeah. It's at 7.35, maybe it was quarter to 6, 7.35 puck drop, and that was so people can get the uh, best seat or their favorite seat yeah, over general admission. Crazy. I, I And I know it happens in a lot of arenas, but we've never seen it where we broadcast our games from. No. Um, but yeah, that was impressive. The fans really coming out, especially in a very important series, and we'll talk about that in a segment later on down the road. Yeah, and uh, the view that those those guys have, Tom and Dave, um, just right over the ice, and that's a penthouse, just, man. That is a penthouse view. It was, it's it's awesome. That's high rent district right there. Something that we're not used to here no, in Felony Flats. The, we are as low as the low can go. The best part about that, they show up and everything's all set up for them. That's kind of nice. That is nice. I wish we had that. Yeah, I know that would be nice. Yeah, instead of us showing up, uh, we exactly. have another road. We have another road trip coming yes, we up do. as well. We will be heading out. This coming Wednesday to McCall, Idaho. Yeah. Um, seven and a half, eight hour drive, probably. Um, well, it depends on who drives. Well, we'll split the driving, so we'll say seven and a half hours. A couple stops, obviously. Uh, they're starting out the weekend with 32 degrees um, as the high, nine as the low, and then uh, it looks like it's going to be warming up through the rest of the week up into the f- high 40s. When we're uh, there, it's going to be that cold? N- well, it'll be chilly at night, but it's going to, during the day, it'll get up to the high 40s, low 50s. Oh, outstanding. Yeah, so yeah, we, have a, we have a possibility when we head up and over that mountain to hit some snow. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just sort of float over it. Does that mean we've got to get changed for no, the uh, car? No, no. No, uh, again, it depends on who's driving. Yeah. Yeah. So well, then that's good. fine. You can drive the entire way. But yeah, I'm looking forward to he- heading <laughs> no, up there. That's, that's not what I meant. <laughs> well, that's a second reference you made to driving. So not if you want to drive, you you can uh, drive the limo over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as you're sitting back and you know watch all those nasty taboo videos that I know you like to watch in cars. Well, I get those off of your uh, iPad, right? Shh. Wife didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so we, we're going to have a great time over McCall, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that again in later episodes uh, in the show tonight. 
couple things. Contact us, bsboysalive.com. Love to hear from you. You can call and leave us a message on the line of BS, or I don't know, maybe even if uh, we see the phone ring, we might actually answer it and talk to you live. 971-258-2840. 971-258-2840. Once again, the other thing I want to mention is we have a Facebook page. Yes, we do. You can go to. I mean, we update it. Uh, you know, I mean, on a regular basis, usually with show stuff, but it's uh, facebook.com forward slash the BS boys. If you want to friend us on Facebook and keep track of <laughs> all the misdoings that the uh, the Red Lake District absolutely loves to do. Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll be posting some stuff from uh, McCall, Idaho. Um, it's going to so- be busy over there. It's yep. yeah. And, and again, we're going to talk uh, about how busy it's going to be and, you know, show or uh, later uh, on in the show. But it's going to be like three games a day for the first two games and man yeah. Saturday. It's going to be nuts. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I certainly hope you will join us for those shows over there in McCall. Making the rounds, man. Southern Oregon, Idaho. Yeah. What are we to next? Gosh, one could only imagine, right? Rochester, Minnesota, maybe. I don't know. If anybody from USA Hockey's listening, uh, we'd love to come over there and tear that rank up. Yeah. I, I think I would prefer that they fly us out there, though. No, you fly, I drive. It's really, <laughs> it's really fairly simple. I don't really want to fly anywhere. So we had um, a couple things that... We will talk about a little bit later on. I'm sure most of you heard about the Helena tragedy. We're going to be yep. talking about that a little bit later on as well. But we really kind of want to make sure that you guys get involved in the show. This is your show. Everyone listening out there, you have input in the show. You can send us an email. You can call us. You can leave voicemail. You can message us on Facebook. Let us know because we're sort of running out of the season pretty dang quick. Yeah, and um, we, we have had a, a couple callers, and it's usually... AJ, we, we really appreciate AJ giving us a holler on, on the line of BS. Well, and we've gotten emails, and you know we, we will certainly respond to those emails as they come in. Try to keep them pertinent to the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are just so, so off, off base, it's not even funny. But, uh, hey, yeah. show topics, too. So what do you want yeah. to hear? Yeah, I mean, again, we're getting sort of near the end here of the playoffs and of the show, but we will... I don't know. We have some ideas. We may continue on a little bit deeper. We're just sort of bouncing ideas around, but we would love to hear your comments and ideas for show topics. So, yeah, give us a call. Send us an email. Friend us on Facebook. Love to hear from you. Yeah, and you'll be able to hear about all of our happenings if you friend us on Facebook. Yeah, for the most part. Um, So that really is going to bring us up here to trying to get a hold of Mark Collins. It's kind of exciting, and we're talking to him about this. Uh, an expansion team, first year expansion team, really didn't make a lot of trades at all, if uh, uh, if any. Well, you can ask them. Fairly, you know, the, I think the roster remained the same pretty much through the entire season. A couple, a couple changes, but he didn't really go chasing people to make a big run. Fairly young team, and we did talk to Mark a while ago, but an, an expansion team winning the cup, Helena had the cup for a long time. They pretty much run, won it every year. It was always Helena and Seattle, you know, fighting for the cup. Last year, Southern Oregon and Seattle fought for the cup. Southern Oregon won. So there was going to be a new new champion either way. Yeah, Mike, you know, new coach, first year coach Mike Sanaway came in and and uh put a pretty darn good team together and it was a good series between uh Southern and uh Seattle at the end. Um and yeah, there's there's a couple things that, that we definitely want to talk to Mark about. And one of them was one of the comments he made when we talked to him a couple of weeks ago. Steve was um, you know he was hoping that one of his uh, goalies would would have stepped up by now and taken the number one position. And uh, he definitely had someone take that number one position over the playoff series. Yeah, we're going to talk to him yep. about uh, that as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a real quick break. We're going to go ahead and get uh, Mark Collins on the line. This is the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show right here on the Pirate Radio Network. Uh, Ten seconds left on the clock. Bellingham's still in control. Oh, that one goes off the post. You got to feel sorry here for Josh Tweetmeyer, Michael Pijanowski, and uh, uh, Ryan Kaluza here, the the, uh, three 20-year-olds on this team, which is this will be their last junior game that they will ever play. Well, folks, that does it as Bellingham dogpiles 
final score, three to one, as Bellingham defeats West Sound and wins the cup. Hey, and uh, that was a perfect lead-in song, too, that little bit of ACDC. It's a long way to the top, kind of like the 2012-2013 uh, season for Bellingham. They got off to a rough start, losing 10-2 to to West Sound Warriors in the first game back in October. The expansion team started off their existence with a 1-8-1 record, which included a loss to the Vancouver Vipers. Here we go again. The USA's <laughs> Hockey Tier 3 Junior Championships is scheduled to start on April 4th and end on uh, the 8th in Rochester, Minnesota. The format has changed and only the champions from each of the eight participating leagues will be attending. And on the line here, we have the Cascade Cup champion coach of the Bellingham Blazers, Mark Collins. Mark, how are you? Oh, not too bad, gentlemen. How are you? Excellent. Hey, congratulations on, on a great series, a first round series, and uh, then the championship. Exciting run there, and that's, uh, the final series was, I'm sure, it's good entertainment for the fans and everything. So. Well, there you go. We put the fans in there for you, Mark. Everyone's applauding, yeah. screaming, and hooting for you right there, man. That had to have been exciting. I, how was it when you went back to uh, Bellingham after uh, leaving West Sound? Was uh, kind of crazy there? Uh, after the after the win, it was uh, well. We had the party bus down there, so they. Uh, they traveled back with and and it was it was pretty exciting lots of congratulations the next couple of days at work but uh, even the first couple of games um, in Bellingham the Friday night and and Saturday I think we had over 700 fans both nights so it was uh, it was pretty crazy in Bellingham good lord that's a, that's a lot was that uh, your big biggest attendance for the season oh yeah yeah by far it was uh, well we've we've got 500 a couple times I think but uh, but yeah that was, that was I've never seen that many people in that uh, in that rank at all yeah so for, so first round you uh, sweep Eugene and then uh, head into the finals against West Sound and you take the first game in West Sound 3 nothing. what were your mm-hmm. thoughts leading into the game too um, you know we we did everything we executed uh, a, a really solid game plan in game one and I think we really frustrated them um, we we just played solid our our system. We stuck to it. We were very disciplined. Um, you know, we kind of just kept going at them and at them and at them, and then they got frustrated and took a few penalties. But um, going into game two, I think we were you know we we tend to do that. We did it in game two in Eugene too. We kind of started off slow, and and I think that was the difference in the game. That first period kind of cost us, and we did the same thing in Bellingham too. You know, one of the things you'd mentioned when we talked to you uh, a couple of weeks ago was uh, your goalies. You had two pretty good goalies, but uh, it seemed like neither one of them was was taking or wanted that number one spot. And lo mm-hmm. and behold, you you head into the playoffs, and Cody Cody Foster just tore it up in the playoffs. He had eight games that he played. Six and two, two hundred ninety-three saves, there you go. and point uh, nine four five save percentage. Outstanding yeah. series. Yeah, you know he was uh, he was phenomenal all playoffs, and <clears throat> I, I started him against Eugene, thinking that he's. I think he had shut out Eugene twice this season during the regular season, so I kind of thought, well, it's you know I, I didn't know if he had his number, right, but I just kind of had a hunch with him, so went with him and and have him look back. It's he's been just incredible and even that final game uh in bremerton on on sunday he made some absolute highlight real saves you know what's funny is um especially with you know he's kind of young he's a 95 uh born kid did you see yeah did you see kind of the the way they mature did you see a, a big maturity from say the beginning of the season to the last game of the playoffs in cody yeah you know what there's a if there's a lot more determination in his in his eye right now. Um, he just kind of once he started to roll, um, then he you could see the focus was there. And I I don't even think I've talked to him in two weeks. I just now that he started winning, I just leave him alone. Don't talk to him. <laughs> well, you shouldn't talk to goalies anyway, uh, exactly. and make sure they have plastic utensils in their hands and not you know sharp silver utensils. Just yeah, a exactly. different uh, different breed, but we. I saw it, especially you know, with my background. I certainly, when I was watching him, I certainly saw more of a kind of a confident stance, a confident move. When he'd move, it was quick, decisive. There was no hesitation, and as that confidence built, 
I saw him playing a little bit further out too. And, you know, you could definitely tell the kid was, he wanted that bad. And I'm sure the whole team did, but you have solid goaltending between the pipes and that's where the playoffs really kind of rest is with your goaltender. So it was great to see Cody step up. Yeah. He started, uh, it was the right time for him to step up, you know, and and that's the biggest thing. He just kind of, and once he got his groove or he, he just, just kept rolling and rolling. So it, it was real, it was good to watch. And, and, you know, I think it gives the, the guys a good sense of calmness on the back end there as well. So game four, you guys are over there, you know, you're in your home barn. That's the, uh, the double OT game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the kid faces like 74 shots, stop 70 yeah. of them. And I watched the game, and there were so many opportunities for that game to end on both sides and oh, going that deep. You had to have been having a heart attack on the bench. How hard was that to sit there and watch that game unfold? It was, uh, it was entertaining. Uh, I was, uh, there, there was a couple times there they, they missed some goals kind of back door where we, you know, when we were getting tired, we were blowing coverage here and there, and and they had some opportunities, and, and I just looked at Jake and Pepe, my assistant coaches, and I was like, holy moly, I'm just going to end. It, you know, it could have gone either way many times. So, so, yeah, I think my blood pressure was about 142 over 90 after that game. So, <laughs> Yeah, you guys look so calm on the bench, but, you know, underneath that jacket and that stern face you have, there's, there's some blood boiling out under there, isn't there? Yeah, you know what, I'm always... Uh, I've always been a competitor, and I've played in a couple of national championships myself, and it's one of those things I just, you know, as a coach, that's where I've had to make the difference. As, as a player, I can go out and do something about it, and as a coach, I need to kind of remain calm and try and portray that to the boys, and so it helps them kind of stay a little calm so they don't start reeling and things spiraling out of control. So what's the, what's the mood like like after the game game four uh, before heading down to West Sound for that uh, fifth game game on the seventeenth? Uh, what do you what do you talk about to the boys? What's the mood like in in the locker room? Um, well, it wasn't. Uh, there was a little bit of relief. Um, at the same time, I wasn't real happy with our performance in the third period. Um, I didn't want to address that with the boys going into overtime, so I definitely addressed it with them after the game. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it was a relief that it was that we got it. I think we were fortunate, fortunate to get that. And, uh, you know, we had our Bryce Canning, who scored the goal, was, was uh, phenomenal that game. He actually played well all playoffs. And uh, I think we were real optimistic because I think if we realized we could get back to that discipline game that we played in game one, we'd be all right in game five. Well, Bryce actually uh, eight games played. Uh, he didn't wind up in the scoring sheet a whole lot. Two goals, one assist, three <laughs> three points. So that that score, that that one goal came at a opportune time. But your big guns really kind of carried you all the way through. You got well, Cody Rich finished with twelve points. Mason Wade with twelve points. Uh, Moore with seven. Davis with six. Uh, that that leadership really showed at the proper time, and that's kind of you want to peak. Right there. You want to peak at that right time. And the guys you relied on all year long did not let down. Have you found, it's kind of a strange question, especially with as much hockey as we've watched and been involved in and stuff like that, were you ever afraid that they were going to have that playoff punk, that playoff drop? Because they were peaking really well at the end of the season. Did you think it might drop off a bit? Mm, You know what? No, it's easy to say we've we've had to play from behind a few times this year, and it and I've noticed that we we don't really let it get to us. I, I try to not um, let things get out of hand. If we get down in games, we still have the ability to come back, and it doesn't take it just takes a little play here and there, and I think that makes a difference for these guys. And and you look at you know they're scoring through the regular season, and yeah, and they had it, but just a little chip here and there made a big difference. So like, and I look at, and I say Bryce Kenning and, you know, and he only had the three points, but his two goals were both game winners. And the final series I played him against pretty much exclusively against Tweetmeyer's line and West Sound. So, you know, he was, his line with uh, Papiano and Turner were kind of asked about, you know, I was playing them against their top line to kind of match that up a little bit. So that's why their points were down. 
And that's, you know what, though, even with the points down, they do so much away from the score sheet. They really, oh, yeah. they really do on that. I think, I, I think sometimes people put way too much emphasis on, are they on the score sheet, you know, a goal or an apple or whatever. But these guys really worked well away from the puck and created oh, yeah. so much more than the score sheet actually tells. Um, <laughs> did you guys get to do anything special with the cup? I mean... <laughs> Some people eat Cheerios out of it. Well, what do you guys do with the cup now that you have it? Have you given it to the boys? Did you put it in a trophy case? What's the deal? Um, well, they celebrated it with. Uh, they celebrated it that night uh, in the locker room. That was about it. And then we, we took it back to the rink. I don't. I don't even think the top comes off that cup. I think it's glued on. Well, that's well. Maybe they're smart that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's just so people don't drink out of it. Yeah. yeah, it's just like a just a hogwash of beer and cereal and everything else. But yeah. uh, we've yeah. never actually we've never actually seen it. We've come close to it, but it's <laughs> every team you know my kid or you know uh, Greg's kid played on never, never got to touch the cup. So you guys are lucky, man. That that's awesome that yeah. uh, you guys got to win that. Yeah, so it's just sitting in uh, it's sitting in our. Um, behind glass in our lobby in the rink there now and I, I think the boys took it out for practice yesterday or the day before and had a little three on three tournament with themselves and they played against or played for it again and um so yeah and that, that's about it but it's it's been good it's, it's actually heavier than I thought it was going to be you mentioned practice are you guys keeping the same routine before you head off uh, to nationals in Rochester Minnesota for your practice yeah for the most part um We've had some pretty easy days practice-wise because we got uh, that that series took a lot out of us. Um, a few guys are banged up, and and now we get uh, Pink Eye running through the team, and so a couple guys with that, and and cold and stuff like that. So I've given them a couple days off of, and the, the few that are uh, still not sick, I suppose, or injured, are coming out to practice, and then uh, next week, then we'll get out of hard here again. So. Well, you start out against the Minnesota Junior Hockey League on Thursday, April 4th at 4, 4 in the afternoon. Uh, you guys taking a long bus ride? Are you flying out there on an airplane? Or what? how's that working out? Yeah, we're flying out on the on the 3rd, get there. Um, I think we, we're taking the red eye, get there on early on the 3rd. Um, I'm going to head down to Rochester, get a practice in, and uh, and then get ready to go on the 4th. So I, and I think it's that Northern Lights team. Uh, so they and they look pretty pretty solid. So well, you know, back in nationals, what we've seen is uh, it, it's fast. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, the, I mean, these, these teams are fast. You guys got placed in the national division, which means yep. you'll be facing um, Northern Lights, New Hampshire Monarchs. Always a solid team. The uh, NA three as well. Wouldn't it have been kind of fun, or would, <laughs> did you have a preference? Wouldn't it have been kind of fun to face Helena or Yellowstone, a team that's so close to kind of renew that old NORPAC America West battle? Yeah, you know, and yeah, that would have been fun. That would have been a good measuring stick for, I think, for us. Um, but on the other hand, it's you know, I look at all those teams and I've kind of done a little research over the last few days, and it's it's we're going to be in tough. Um, but yeah, that uh, Helena or Yellowstone would have been a would have been a good game as well. I know Josh Reese was real well, and he was down at the uh, uh, game five in Bremerton to have a little chat with him. So yeah, he was texting oh, me during the game. Oh, he was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh loves to text just random nonsense. You go, what the hell is he talking about? But <laughs> yeah, he told me he was coming over to uh, to watch the uh, the fifth game. New Hampshire, solid team. Northern Lights, solid team. A lot of these teams have mostly. Most of these teams have playoff national experience. You're young. Uh, most of these guys probably, well, if any of them have ever been back to a tournament like that. How do you keep them contained and not get that excitement that overrides ability? Because I've seen that happen as well. Yeah, you know what? They're. I'm giving them a, a week to kind of just take it all in and then I, I think once we start getting at it again practice wise and, and preparation preparation has been huge for us all year we we work hard to make sure we're ready mentally and physically and and the mental side of it is is once we get focused on our discipline and our game plan 
I don't let them get caught up in, in those little things that they can't control. And, you know, whether it's refs or, or, or anything, we just worry about what we can, what we can control. So and I think if we just keep things like that, um, we'll be fine. Yeah, because you're going to be heading back there with a ho- probably a whole new slew of refs that you've never seen uh, before, mm-hmm. and and especially all these teams, and they, they're they're good teams. So it's it's going to be a blast for the boys to be back there and and playing at this this type of a tournament. Yeah, we'll probably have one of the younger teams there, I would imagine. Yeah, you probably will. Yeah, you you're young. We talked about that last time, but yeah. the thing um, if if you if you can kind of keep this uh, group together, that not only the experience in playoffs in Norpak and winning the cup. Of course, you guys be the defending champions, but the maturity that they're going to gain, the experience they're going to gain through all the run here in Norpak and back at nationals will really benefit these guys come next year. Oh, for sure. They'll have that, they'll have that experience and kind of know what it takes to, to get back there. Cause it is tough to win. It is, it is tough to, to be champions. And then you, you realize after that, you know, you, you get there and, you have the success, and then you look at it the next year, and it's like, holy man, this is, it's it's tough to get there because anybody can beat anybody, and you know it's just getting on top of the mountain versus staying on top of the mountain. Yeah, just like that song at the beginning, it's a, it's a long road to the top, man. And and uh, we just want to congratulate you and your assistant coaches and the organization for a great season. Um, and we wish you the best of luck back there in Rochester, Minnesota. We. Steve and I will definitely be watching and uh, rooting you guys on back there. Well, thanks for having me. I hope we don't uh, hope we do well and don't let anybody down. <laughs> well, you but know, I, you know, I, I got all the confidence in the boys. I think we should. Uh, I, I think we'll surprise a few teams here. I think you will, and just sort of the uh, the demeanor and the way the boys have played and your coaching style. It's been a blast to watch all year. And uh, just to remind everybody. It should be broadcast on FastHockey.com. So anybody, you know, uh, fans of the Blazers can tap into FastHockey.com and watch the boys on the road. Yep. Mark, we certainly do appreciate the time. Congratulations on a huge, huge, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say upset, but you are the number three seed. Not really the, you know, the favorite to win this. And you guys came in and barnstormed. It's got to feel good, man. We loved watching you all year long. And best of luck back there at Natty's. Well, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for having me again, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been an exciting run, and hopefully we can keep we can keep it going here with uh, some momentum and have some sec- success in the in the nationals. I'm sure you will, man. Well, you guys enjoy the uh, trip back there, and we'll be tapping in. And uh, best of luck, man. All right, thank you very much. There he is, Mark Collins. Yeah, head coach of the Bellingham Blazers, um, Cascade Jump Cup champions, and the and the Jump champions as well. Cascade. Cup, Cup. Say champion. That, say say that, that after a long Friday night. Yeah, exactly. And possibly a long weekend, but uh, confidence in his voice. He kind of knows what he's up against. Uh, you know, it's going to be a great experience for all those guys back there in Rochester. Uh, I know my son experienced it twice. Um, they didn't really do well back there. It's tough. It is a tough Tough venue, but pretty good exposure. I don't know really how many scouts or coaches go to that anymore, but there will certainly be some scouts. Uh, another friend of the BS boys, uh, Brandon Hawsey, will be back there as the Atlanta Knights, the defending champions, made the jump from the Eastern Junior Hockey League South. So they're going to be at the uh, Natties as well. So it's going to be a blast. Yeah, we're going to have a good time watching it. And um, hopefully we've got some contacts back there that we'll be able to tap into to get some updates from oh, yeah. live. We're, we're be, uh, we're be, we're be talking, I'm sure, to AJ. And may, maybe even uh, give Mark a call when he's yeah. uh, back there and we'll see what uh, we can set up. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a real quick break right here so we can get all the paperwork set up for the next segment. You're listening to the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show right here on the Pirate Radio Network, 971-258-2840. Give us a call. Ah, yes, once again, back live. Nice talking to Mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fun to talk to uh, Coach Collins and really seems to have kind of a pretty good vision about what what they have to do to be successful back there in Minnesota. Yeah, and it's going to be fun uh, for him and the boys to get back there. And, and I'm definitely going to follow up with them. A, Steve had a good suggestion on the break that uh, uh, maybe we can get a hold of Mark. And, well, 
We'll use we'll use as many contexts as we can to get some live updates from back in Natties. So over in the A Dub, uh, we've got the Lewis and Clark Cup finals finally kicking off next weekend. Helena ended up sweeping Missoula, though I will say, <laughs> Missoula Cody Jansen, the goalie, wow. uh, kid's ninety six. He's 16, uh, 16 years old. The kid played three games. And if you want to go on stats, it ain't going to be great. It's not going to go, you know, all that great. But I don't really care about the stats. Kid went 0 3, 4.65 goals against. Not a great goals against percentage there or an average, but a 93% save average. That's amazing. A great save percent average. Not a great so goals against. And the goals against, kind of a team stat. Save percentage, more of a goalie stat. Cody Jansen played great. Canadian kid. Yeah, he, the, for, that first game on uh, Friday, March 8th, they listed it at, as 95 shots to 65 shots, and that was a two overtime uh, win for Helena, three to two. The amazing amount of shots in that game. Crazy amount of shots, yeah. and it didn't really it didn't really settle down either. There were 21 shots by Helena in the first OT, 13 in the second, 16 for Missoula in the first OT, and 16 in the second. That's insane. I mean, the amount of like energy expelled there, not only by the players, but by the goalies, 95 shots is crazy. Well, it's crazy. And that second overtime goal was scored 640 in, and they've got 19, uh, 16 shots for Missoula in that second overtime and 13 for the Helena Bighorns. That's an awful lot of shots in a short amount of time. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And Missoula ended up going two for 10 in the power play. Helena one for seven. I don't know. The kid, Jansen, stellar. Stellar. He should not be back next year. I I cannot imagine this kid coming back and playing this level again. You think he's going to head up to NAUSHL? I'm thinking um, he's got, no, I'm, I'm thinking higher, man. I'm thinking dub? he'll be back. Oh. He, he may be back to the dub because he, he uh, was the last kid cut in the, the Brandon Wheat Kings camp. So I think the Wheaties may take another hard look at this kid and at least maybe keep him closer to them in case they need to call him up. But it'll be fun to watch where Cody ends up going next year. Yeah, you would ex- you would hope that uh, the scouts are looking at these games, and, and especially that first playoff game, how many shots that, that kid had to put up with. And uh, you'd continue on with the other games, and he had quite a few shots as well. Well, Helena actually ended up racking up uh, 89 shots on goal in game three when they won 8-0. Good Lord. Yeah, absolutely insane. So they rack up. With 95 shots in game one. Not really sure about game two. I didn't really. Helen ended up blanking Missoula 5-zip. But going to uh, game three, 89 shots on goal is, again, an absolute insane amount of shots. Three games played, 219 shots. Not uh, not your norm. But Helena, Helena kind of went nuts there the last game. And... We did talk about this a little bit at the at the top of the show, and uh, they had a tragedy befall them. It was last Thursday we talked to AJ on the show. Yeah, Friday morning at about three a.m. ish. Yeah, I guess about three a.m. Uh, Wyatt Winfield was involved in a single vehicle accident and passed away from his injuries. The I mean, literally, what sixteen hours before. Game time. Yep. And, you know, a team that comes back from that kind of devastation and rolls an 8 0, 89 shot count, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, and it's it's not just the team that he plays for, too, right? It's it's the other team. The other the other boys know him just as well, too, probably. And um, yeah, it, it impacts the teens and, and everyone. It's it's horrible tragedy. It's and it's just it happens a lot, I know, but you know, this it's happened before with a couple teens that we've been associated with too and it it's never a good thing. Well, you know, the, the it happens and uh, more times than not we don't hear about it in the mainstream news unless we're uh, uh, closely related. But hockey is such a small community that you hear about these things and sadly it does happen. And uh, Helena really had to come back from that. 
mental aspect of it. So Jet Salinas, another phenomenal series, ended up shutting Missoula out in the two games he played. And uh, yeah, a thousand percent save average. Yeah, and uh, I I think uh, I was a little bit surprised that uh, Jet came back and and well not not really surprised, but I know that uh, um, Alex was uh, playing a lot more games. Lazarski, yeah, was playing more games towards the end of the season than Jet was. Um, but it was good to see Jet come back and and have those shutouts and have a thousand save percentage. Possibly another kid that won't be back next year. Yep, big boy, too. Uh, yeah, he's got good size behind him and played very solid in the two games that he faced the uh, Missoula Maulers in. But uh, So I, I don't know if you know Salinas will be back next year, but he has a possibility of popping up and a, possibly maybe even a level higher, and we have to watch uh, for that. You mentioned Alex, uh, Alex Lazarski. Alex played extremely well in the one game he played against Missoula, 1.3 eight goals against 96, I'm going to call it 97, it's .969, 97% save average. Helen has got some phenomenal goaltending, but so does Yellowstone. Yeah, Shaletti ended it with a nine four three save percentage. This is going to be a this is going to be a showdown of goalies right here. Can you imagine the amount of shots that these teams are going to put on each other, and uh, uh, the, with the talented goalies that both of these teams have? I'm thinking low shot count. You are. I am. I'm thinking low shot count. I think they have made the again. This is me, but you, you cannot continue to put that many shots on a goalie and expect the goalie to perform every single game. There's just no way. Well, we're going to find out real soon. Helena does uh, go to Cody, Wyoming, to take on Yellowstone starting this Friday. Tomorrow night, it's the finals, the Lewis and Clark Cup finals. Helena versus Yellowstone. So Friday, Saturday in Cody. Then the following weekend back in Helena. Yeah, and and I'm going to say, think that it's probably about a 7.30 puck drop mountain time. Um, and the, you, you can find those games on AWTV. Um, just go to the AWHL website and you will see AWTV. Yep, yeah, they're not covered by Fast Hockey. They actually have their own little broadcast network and they do a pretty good job. Yeah, we, they do. Yeah, we watched uh, quite a few games through the uh, AWTV. They network. do a great job. The one thing that I we need to find out from AJ is where they have their archive games so that we can I go already back know. and watch. Oh, you found it? Yeah. Okay, good, good. We Because you didn't tell me about that. But Well, what, do you want to watch something? Yeah, I wanted to watch a few of the games, yeah. I wanted to watch... You should ask. We talked about this. Over no, you should day. ask. I, I'm I, when I leave, when I leave the studio, you are the last thing on my mind. <laughs> the show's the last thing on my mind. You're the last thing on my mind. Let me take a look at my texting. Here. So you text me if you need anything, yeah. and I'll let you know. All right, I'll do that. Yeah. What is your number? It's unlisted. Uh, Can't have it. And how can I text you? America West, they are actually in the American uh, division of the Nationals. They will be playing the Eastern States Hockey League, Eastern Junior Hockey League South, which will be Atlanta, defending national champions, and then the Metropolitan Junior Hockey League. Now, Eight they, teams make Nationals. It, which is different, a lot different from last year. I think they had 12 yeah. last year. Yeah, because uh, I think three went from the A Dub, a couple went for the NORPAC that I'm aware of. And you know who did really well in the A Dub, from the A Dub last year was Billings. Billings, yeah. Billings did very well last year. And then we ended up having, uh, yeah, yeah, three, I think, from A Dub. Yep. <laughs> Which is insane. Yeah, I don't get it. And then they came back and they played. They came, the, the more insane thing is they came back and played their league championship. Yeah, after nationals, they had to come back and play their league championship, which Helena won. And, you know, after Nationals, you come back. I think the boys are kind of ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm done. done. I want to rest. Yeah. So trying to keep them motivated to play uh, their their championship. That couldn't have been easy. So let's see. When does A-Dub play? A-Dub play? And then, yeah, look at the she. In the she. So the, the America West is going to have their first hockey game on the fourth against the Metropolitan Junior Hockey League. So in Rochester, Minnesota, at Natty's, it's going to be fun to watch. We'll be watching all those games as well, as many as possible. Yeah, we'll be watching as many as possible. Um, But it will be a lot of fun to actually follow the guys and see how well 
either Helena or Yellow, uh, Yellowstone does. Again, their series kicks off tomorrow night, probably 7.30 Mountain Time. Yep. And uh, you can catch all the action on A-Dub TV. Real quick break. We're going to come back and cover the Western States Hockey League. This is the Red Lake District Junior Hockey Talk Show, folks. Thanks for joining us. It's the puck up ice. Now Mather intercepts, but it's poked down the ice, and that will do it. As the Idaho Junior Steelheads complete the two-game sweep of the first round of this playoff series, beating the Seattle Totems tonight 7-1. To and it will be the Junior Steelheads against either Southern Oregon or Ogden next Friday night here in McCall. 16 seconds to go. Spartans are about to wrap up this playoff win. And they're trying to get back to Nationals like they did last year, and that's step one right there. Let's get the shot up right here. There you go. Best thing to do. Spartans win it 7 to nothing over the Ogden Mustangs. And they're heading to Idaho for the second round of the playoffs. There was a call both by uh, Dick Dorfman yes. of Idaho and Dave and Tom. Down there at uh, Southern Oregon. Who we had the pleasure to call the game with on uh, Saturday night. We did. So in the Western States, they are ready to go into the uh, conference finals starting tomorrow. Yes. They have run all the semis, and now we are down to the final eight. Yes, we are. And uh, for your conference final schedules, you can go to the WSHL website and check out where... All those games are being played. Who's playing? The Tines. But for the Northwest Division, the Southern Oregon Spartans are making that long bus ride up to McCall, Idaho, to play the Idaho Junior Steelheads Friday night, 7 p.m. puck drop in the McCall Ice Center. That's Mountain Time. Yep, Mountain Time as well. And uh, Saturday night, they will be playing at 7 p.m. as well at the McCall Ice Center. And then, if necessary, they'll be playing Game 3 Sunday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. All three games up there in in Idaho. Yep, all those games can be caught on FastHockey.com. Following uh, the Spartans as they hit the road and the Steelheads as they begin their quest and one more round deeper into it to defending their Thorn Cup championship for the last two years. Absolutely. Dick Dorfman will be calling those games up in Idaho. Yipper. So Idaho and uh, Southern have met six times this uh, past season. Idaho is pretty much 6-0. and They've pretty much dominated everybody this this year. Yeah. Uh, they've lost twice, I think, at home. Yeah. So well, it's going to be a very tough road. Uh, going back to October 26, Idaho beat the Spartans 8-3. Back on the 27th, it was a 6-2 win for Idaho. And on Sunday, the 28th, 7-4. But the last time, uh, three times these teams met, it was a whole different ballgame. Yeah, uh, much closer. Uh, Idaho won, but that was a one-goal win, 4-3. to three. And then... Uh, in overtime. In overtime. And then on Saturday night, 2-1 to one win over the Spartans. And then the Idaho Junior Steelheads finished it off with a 4-3 win over the Spartans. And there was a couple of those games where Idaho actually had to come back. Oh, they from, were, yeah, they were down. And so, you know, the, the Madhouse is a tough place to play. It is. And we'll find out what kind of, I don't know, what happens when the boys Southern Oregon goes to McCall. That's also a very tough place to play. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the, you mentioned that... Uh, the Steelheads had to come back in one game. They were down 3 nothing heading into the last period. Ended up coming back and winning that game 4-3. Uh, to three. We had uh, Seattle over in Idaho for the semis. Yeah, we did. 3-1 um, to one first night. Seattle had a really good game. Idaho pulled it out. Um, but uh, it, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting Idaho to put up a few more goals than three against the Totems. Interesting goalie situation in Idaho for Seattle. Yeah, and, and that's that's one of the reasons I wanted to lead into that, Steve, is you know, they gave up three goals, but you know, go ahead and tell everybody what ended up happening over there. Idaho outshot Seattle fifty to ten in that game. Idaho went two for five on the power play, Seattle went one for five. Here's the deal. Fink had the start late in the second period. Uh, he went down with an injury. There was a partial breakaway. I, I think it was Bricado that was coming in. Uh, ended up losing his footing, going into Fink. 
and Fink ended up injuring his knee, had to be taken out of the game. Christian Vivian, Seattle backup, comes in. Well, Vivian is suffering from an ankle injury from a few weeks prior in Idaho. Tells coach after the period, can't go. I cannot move on my ankle. So that <laughs> they go, well, you're the only two goalies we have. That's it. it so the what ended up happening is between periods, I guess Coach Murphy, I don't know, there was a discussion. Anyway, the third goalie on Idaho, Olison, Victor Olison, had been released, and he was still at the arena, and I think it was like in the merchandise stand or something like that. They actually picked him up. Seattle picked him up right then and there, dressed him, and he played the third period. You, it, amazing how that happens. You, you, All sitting, that stuttering, that's what I get? It, it, it's chill out, man. Just chill out. <laughs> it, sitting up there, He's sitting up there selling merchandise. Yep. And they come up and say, "Hey, you need to dress. You need to dress." No, no, I stay. I sell. I sell. Yeah, he he was kind of stunned that from one minute he was, uh, you know, Steele had released, and then it was a totem. They had to have uh, a third goalie, and they ended up, you know, losing that game, three one, and then they ended up taking a hit the following night, which Olafson played the entire game seven one, and that pretty much ended Seattle's season right there. Well, and. I think a team has to have two goalies on the bench at, at these games. Um, I, I think because I, I've well, seen they do. that. Yeah, Vivian was on the bench. Vivian didn't leave the bench. He just couldn't go. Yeah, and so Vivian was a backup in game two as well in the seven-one win. Idaho again in that game outshot Seattle forty-one to fourteen. Went two for three on the power play. They are a tough, fast, quick team. Yeah, and after two periods uh, on the in that game, it was it was one to one. Both go, both of those goals scored in the second period. Actually, yep. Idaho comes back and scores two and a third on Olafson. You know those kids knew they they pl- practiced with Olafson all year long. They they know him. Spartan seven, Ogden Mustangs zero. Game three last Sunday, in which the Spartans ended up wrapping up their semifinals for a chance to go to Idaho once again. Now this game. For those of you that watched it on uh, Fast Hockey, had some issues yeah. near the end of it. We had a nice chat with uh, Coach LeMay uh, Saturday, Saturday went down night. and uh, had a had a talk with uh, Coach LeMay. But the end of the end of the, near the end of the game, uh, seven nothing game was out of reach. Yeah, it did just a bunch of penalties in the third period. Well, it wasn't you know yeah it all kind of happened at the uh, sixteen forty one mark. A lot of roughings, had contact, slashing, tripping. Uh, it, that's bench. really not the – that wasn't the issue. It was the issue with Aaron Peters kind of hacking Bordak from the bench, then leaving the bench and getting in a, uh, a fight. He actually jumped – well, I don't know if he jumped him. He had to go around with a couple of uh, Spartans. And Chamberlain, who's on the ice, would not let it go. And Chamberlain ended up jumping on Connor Quinn completely. And Connor Quinn's back is turned to him. Caught on fast hockey. Ogden yep. Mustang had 67 penalty minutes. Uh, Southern Oregon 32 in a, uh, attendance that night was Deputy Commissioner Bob Armando, and he witnessed all this. And this is not a typical Ogden team. No, this is frustration, kind of running rampant. I, I definitely get that. Uh, you just at that point you don't want anybody to get hurt, especially when they're being attacked from behind or hit from the bench. And then at one point, Falica left and went up to his blue line and kind of challenged Bryn to uh, have a go around. But Bryn did the smart thing and didn't didn't accept. But here here's the great thing about what happened is the game ended. Nobody really wanted the teams to shake hands because you shake hands at the end of a series. Nobody wanted the teams to shake hands. The coach, was one, some coach, was on the ice for Southern. I think it was Salisbury's dad who came out to replace Grimaldi. And he really didn't want the boys to go up and shake hands because of the way it was going. It was ending. Period. So it looked as if one of the Spartans went up and one of the Ogden Mustangs went up and then they shook hands. And then it wasn't a line. It was a circle. It was a mingling. And all the guys were shaking hands and giving pats and giving hugs and leaning down and talking to each other. It was probably one of the coolest things I've seen as far as the end of a hockey game. 
Well, I had a lot of, had a lot of frustration, and, and you know, once that game ends, um, Ogden realizes what's happening next. Their, their season's over. Um, you know, they just put that over their over their shoulder, and let's go out and just congratulate Southern on the win. Well, there's nothing more you can do. It's no. just, you know, it's a good thing nobody was injured, and LeMay did a great job. Ogden was up and down all year this year, had an extremely talented bench, never really put the pieces together, first-year coach. I'm expecting yeah, that was a big learning curve, and he will be back next year with a very solid team. Yeah, good guy. We'll probably be bringing him back for some more interviews as well on the show. So these, uh, this is the way it kind of goes. Both Idaho hosting and since Southern wrapped up the semifinal win, Southern qualifies for the Thorn Cup championship. So all the other divisions, all the other conferences, the winner of the conference will end up going to the Thorn Cup as well. So Southern in Idaho right now, uh, I'm not going to say meaningless games because this will be the conference championship, but it'll give Southern a really good, I guess, lead in to see what they have to fix before they actually start the tournament a week from Thursday. No, it's going to be for the Northwest Division. That's that's a championship, and uh, they're coming in there full steam. They they don't want neither one of those teams want to lose that. Now, my question is is is. Is Southern staying up there? Th- yeah, they the are. Week? They are. Okay. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're going to stay the entire time. Yep. Which only makes sense because they play uh, two games, possibly a third on Sunday, and then they have to be there Wednesday. So why come back? Yeah, more pr- uh, practice uh, skate on Wednesday up there. Um, everything's getting set up. A couple receptions will be there Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. So for all of the teams and participants and parents showing up. Yeah, so the tournament information, this is the way it kind of sits. Uh, Wednesday the 27th, they will have ice available for practice. There will be a kickoff reception at 6.30. Then 7.30 will be the opening night welcoming party. Players, parents, family, and fans can attend that Thursday. That's the first game of the round-robin play. Games are at 12, 4, and 8. Same on Friday. Saturday, which would be the semifinals, there is a game at 10 for the teams that don't qualify for the semis, game at 2, game at 7. Then the championship game on Sunday will be at 5 o'clock. Late evening start there for for the championship. I like that late evening start with the exception uh, um, <laughs> that makes it a long evening for us. Well, it makes it a long evening for everybody. There is a lot of things going on as far as this uh, championship and we have a lot of people involved, we will be there doing a talk show at the end of, well, the end of the third game on each day and after the semifinals are wrapped up and after the finals, I think. I'm not really sure we're doing a full talk show after the finals, but uh, we will be doing a specialized version of the Red Light District Junior Hockey Talk Show from McCall, Idaho. Looking forward to it. You'll be able to find out more information on our Facebook page as well as the WSHL. They'll probably have some schedules up there, too. We'll let you know whether that's going to be on Fast Hockey or if it's going to be on Pirate Radio. We're not sure. Yeah, point. still trying to figure the logistics out as far as the broadcast. All the games, though, will be on FastHockey.com. The talk show itself, still trying to figure kind of that whole thing out. So uh, there will not be this traditional show next thursday yeah fel- well that's a good thing because felony flats is going uh, uh undercover next week they're using it for some some things that they can't talk about yeah I, actually i think it's um probably arson practice could be yeah but hey kudos to uh the idaho junior steelhead putting on this uh the thorn cup they're doing putting a lot of work into this a lot of thought and and uh preparation into getting this set up and going it it really is going to be a lot of fun so folks that's going to pretty much wrap it up here for another edition of the red light district junior hockey talk show in closing out this episode And again, we're going to mention it. Wyatt Winfield of the Helena Bighorns passed away early morning last Friday after a one-vehicle accident. Now, Wyatt had played 34 games this season for the Bighorns. 12 goals, 19 assists, 31 points. Not a bad season for the young man. Wyatt's funeral was held today in Helena at the Helena Ice Arena. The Bighorns would like to pass along all their thanks for all the support the hockey community has extended to the Winfield family and to the Helena Bighorns in this time of grief. It is a difficult time for all involved. 
His teammates produced a video that can be seen on YouTube. We skate for Wyatt. We just checked that out. Great video. You know, you got to love the kids for expressing their feelings and love for the fallen teammate in their own way. No words can ever replace the empty space that was created by the tragedy and the event that occurred early morning last Friday. Time goes on and memories will filter in and out, but in the end, Wyatt will always be with his family, friends, and teammates in his own way. Wyatt's way. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Winfield family. Take care, everybody. And as always, safe home. Bye-bye. I just want to see you when you're all alone. I just want to catch you if I can. I just want to be there when the morning light explodes. On your face it radiates I can't escape I love you till the end I just want to tell you Nothing you don't want to hear All I want is for you to say Oh, why don't you just take me Where I've never been before I know you want to hear me Catch my breath I love you till the end I love you till the end